Let me start by showing you how to make use of variables in Houdini. To start with, I'm going to create a simple sphere and what I want the sphere to do is move across in x-axis depending on the exact frame I am at in the play bar. So to do this, I need to have a variable which actually gives me the exact frame number at any given time. For this, I need variables which control the play bar. So for this, I can go into the help documentation. Let me full screen this and search for global expression variables. Here you can see there are several variables which are available. What I'm interested in is the play bar variables. Here you can see $f is the current frame as set in the play bar controls. So I'm going to go ahead and use the $f variable. Let me go ahead. I can go into x-axis, type in $f. As you can see it's yellow in color. If I type in anything wrong it will be red in color and you can also see it shows no matching variables. So it's always important to know if your variables are actually recognized by Houdini. Now $f is added in. As you can see I'm on the first frame and the spear is no longer at the origin of the grid. It's at the first unit and when I move my time slider my spear actually moves. But you cannot actually see the number here by default. You need to click on the name of the translate value itself to show the value itself. As you can see I'm on the 11th frame it's showing the 11th value. Now let us say that uh, I'm on the 120th frame. The spear is so far off from the origin that it's uh, very hard to see. Let's say I want to make sure that the value 120 doesn't even come about in my time slider. Uh, instead of value 120, I want it to be just 12, meaning one tenth of it. For this, I can just go do any kind of simple maths, addition, subtraction, multiplication or division right here. I'll divide this by 10 and that will give me a value which is 10 times as less. So instead of 120, now I have only 12. And similarly, if I go to the end, instead of 240, I have only 24. And same thing applies everywhere. It just divides the value by 10 and gives you the final result. So all of maths is also available for you in Houdini when you're working with. Now that we have gone ahead and actually made use of a variable, let's make use of an expression this time to create a sine wave. Now, to create the sine wave, what I want the spear to do is, while it's moving in the x-axis, I want the spear to also move in y-axis, creating a simple sine wave. So to create the sine wave, I need to know about the different functions available in Houdini. Because I already know that what I want to use is a sign function, I can go into the help documentation. Here, search for expression functions. And in the expression functions, you should be able to see a whole list of different functions which are available. Here, I already know that the function I want to make use of is the sign function, so I'll just go into there. And here you can see it's a SIN function. It returns a sign of the argument. Clicking on this gives me additional detail. The way to use the sign function is sign. I have to put in an open bracket, put in a number into the brackets and close it off. So let's go ahead and see how to make use of it using the example. So because I know I want the spear to move up and down, that is the green axis which is a Y. Always remember R, G and B which is X, Y and Z follow the same order in pretty much all 3D packages. So the green axis is a Y axis and here I want to use a sign function. I'll start typing by SIN and immediately you should see that the uh, Houdini automatically opens the auto update. I can select the sign function and here I need to put in a number. As I've just told you, I want the sign function to be enabled as I'm moving across in the time slider. So basically the argument I want to give is again nothing but $F. I'll go ahead and close this and now if I go through in my time slider you should be able to see that the spear is slightly moving up and down. Let me close the help documentation. I'll change this to my front view so you can see the movement of the spear. So here when I move across you can see the spear is actually moving up and down. It's a very slight sine function. The wave is too big. To get additional detail in the sine function I'll just go ahead and multiply the frame number by about 5. What this does is every single frame number is going to get multiplied by 5 and then the sine value for that will be calculated. This also means the sine wave is going to get compressed 5 times. So now 
I get to see that the sphere is moving up and down quite easily. So by just making use of an expression function which is driven by a variable and also a simple variable controlling a different axis, I got a sine wave moving across in my viewport. So in the future videos, we'll be making use of expressions and variables a lot. This was a very brief introduction just to get you started. You can go through the help documentation to see all the different kinds of functions which are available and all the different examples you have. If you're interested in knowing the ways you can make use of this uh, use of different expressions, you can open up the expression cookbook. Opening up the cookbook gives you additional details on how exactly you can go about making use of different expressions with actual live examples. So I hope you found this video useful. Here we learn the basics of using expressions in Houdini. Now in the next video, we'll see how to use parenting and the channel function to drive different objects. If you have any doubts, suggestions or if you just want to say hi, you can always use the comment section below this video and also don't forget to subscribe for more videos coming soon. I hope to see you in the next one.